Early last week, the initial reviews for Venom started to flood the internet and they were not good. People were comparing it to Catwoman and Fantastic Four. People were describing it as a mess and a total disaster. And then when the Rotten Tomato score came out, it was at about 32% with the top critics giving it just 21%. But then something interesting happened. The movie was released to general audiences and they seem to like it a whole lot more than the critics did. It actually has an 89% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and it has a good but not great B plus cinema score. So is this another example of critics just being out of touch with the general public, or is there a different, more kind of logical explanation besides critics just being biased? Well, I tend to think that there's a logical reason for this, and I'd like to share my theory with you. So let's talk about it. So over the weekend, I've had a bunch of lively discussions, both in my comment section and over on Twitter on this exact subject. So I know you guys have thoughts on this video. That's why you clicked on it. So go ahead and share your thoughts down below in the comment section. Try and respond to each other. Let's have a nice, lively discussion. Also, if you like to talk movies a little bit too much, consider clicking that subscribe button for more movie talk in the future. So as for my theory as to kind of what's going on here, I think you first have to fully understand what Rotten Tomato is. And what Rotten Tomato is, is that it's an aggregate of several hundred professional movie critics. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't just assign a score because they watched the movie and decided to give it a number. No, they look at hundreds of professional movie critics. Not like me, I'm a hobby movie critic. People that actually work for newspapers and this is their profession. And what they aggregate specifically is their answer to the question, do you recommend this movie? Yes or no, it doesn't measure how much they love it or how much they hate it, it's just, do you recommend it? So that score on Rotten Tomatoes is the answer to the question, what percentage of professional critics recommend this movie? So from there, you have to stop and think what a movie critic is. And a movie critic is someone that, that their job is to just go see as many movies as they can and review them. And most professional movie critics, it's not about whether they want to see it or not, it's just they're assigned to go see these movies, especially big blockbusters. So even if they didn't like the trailer, even if they're not interested in the movie, even if the concept is not something that sparks their fancy or whatever you wanna say, they go see it because that is their job. And then when they review the movie, they're reviewing it both for the craft of how good the movie making is, as well as how entertained they are by the movie. And specifically, if you're someone that watches two or three new releases of multiple genres every single week, you start to really hone the craft of noticing the differences between a well-made movie and a poorly made movie. Anyone can go to the movies and have an experience of how much you enjoy it. But that craft of being able to discern between good movie making and bad movie making comes from watching a lot of movies and analyzing them and thinking about the differences. And then stop and consider who the audience is that makes up that audience score. These are people that of all the movies out there, they chose to go see this movie specifically. In a certain sense, they're predisposed to like the film because they chose to go see it. It filters out people that saw the trailer and went, that looks bad. It filters out people that went, the concept of this movie does not interest me at all. It filters out people that see the Rotten Tomato score from the critics and they go, that looks like that's probably a bad movie, so I'm not gonna go see it. So you're left with people that are naturally interested in the movie and want to like it. So the people predisposed to not like a movie because of the trailer, because of the Rotten Tomato score, because of the concept, their feelings on the movie are not factored in to the audience score. But when it comes to the critic score, all the people predisposed to probably not like a movie, it is factored into the score. So to make it real personal, my wife saw the trailer for Venom. She's like, uh-uh, I am not seeing that. And each new trailer came out, she's like, I am definitely not seeing that movie. And so she didn't go see the movie. And if she did see it, she probably wouldn't like it. She doesn't want to see a movie where Venom is eating people's faces. So her dislike, her thumbs down, would not be factored into the audience score. 
But if she was a professional movie critic, her thumbs down would be factored into that score. So what does this mean for Venom specifically? Well, the people that went to go see Venom saw the trailer and they saw Venom kind of biting people's faces, cracking jokes like turd in the wind and this kind of weird, creepy, superhero, anti-hero movie. And they went, I want to go see that. We will eat both your arms and then both of your legs and then we will eat your face right off your head. And that's what the movie delivers well. It does have Venom's weird, dark, twisted sense of humor. It does have him eating people and cracking jokes about eating people. So if you wanted that from the movie, you got it. But what were critics looking for when they went to go see Venom? Well, the same with every other movie they watch, which is, is it a holistically well-made movie? And is it entertaining? And I think objectively speaking, you have to acknowledge that Venom has some story issues and some tone issues. Even if you love the movie, even if you thought it was wildly entertaining, it does have some story issues. So where does that 32% come from with critics and why does that seem pretty logical to me? Well, first off, I would say if you just to do some simple numbers and I'm making these numbers up, I, there's no way to objectively know exactly what these numbers are, but just to think about it as categories of people, probably about a third of people that critics that went to go see Venom are probably predisposed to not be really interested in a movie about an alien taking over people and saying lines like turd in a wind, calling Eddie a p for not jumping out of a building and then biting people's faces off. About a third of movie critics probably are a little bit like my wife, predisposed to not be interested in watching the movie. So right off the top, about a third of them probably didn't like it. And that leaves two thirds of them left. And as they watched it, they have to decide, does the entertainment value outweigh the story issues? And if you say half of those people went entertainment value, outweighs the issues. You get up to 33% or 32%, but you also lose about 33% of people that went, no, the issues outweigh the entertainment. That's where I think that 32% comes from. And I think it makes a lot of sense to me that that's right about where it's at, given its story issues, given its divisive content. This isn't kind of family entertainment that everyone's gonna be entertained by. It's something more safe like Wonder Woman or a Marvel movie. No, it's edgier and edgy things push people off the edge. There's people not interested in edgy and there's people that are very interested in edgy and that's why some people love this movie and wildly entertained by it because it is niche entertainment and niche entertainment is divisive and thus you get a 32% doesn't really surprise me. And you can even look at some critics out there like Dan Merle, he liked the movie. He's probably a lot more critical than I am and he enjoyed the film. Like for me, the reason that when I score movies, I give them two scores is because I sense this kind of tension between how well made it is and how entertaining it is. And in my scores, I said, Venom is more entertaining than it is well made. And I recommended it slightly based off of entertainment. And I said, as a movie, how well it's made, I, I can't really recommend it. That's why I do things the way that I do things. Anyway, that's my theory as to why Venom has such a gigantic gap between the critic score and the audience score. And I think it makes a lot of sense. How about you guys? Tell me your theories down below in the comment section as to why there is such a gap. Am I just kind of grasping for straws. There's a little logic in what I'm saying and what's your theory about it? Also, you can check out my reviews for Venom right over there or a playlist with my absolute best Spider-Man ranking videos right over there. Thank you guys so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.